Welcome everybody to another episode of Wine, Hops, and Road Stops. I'm on location at the Beer Stop in West Sales, and, and we are your guide into the world of wine, craft beer, and good food. I am with my co-host, Alan Giannetti. Alan, how are you today? I'm doing great, thank you. What do we got here in front of us today? What are we going to be talking about today? All right, today we're going to go through just some of the basic styles of beer that you would try if you're just getting into the craft beer world. Nothing extremely heavy, nothing extremely bitter, not getting to the big double IPAs or barrel-aged beers or anything like that. So just nice, easy drinking beers, one that you could easily drink several of. So we're going to go the opposite direction of last episode. Correct, yeah. Last, last episode, we drank some really hoppy beers. Right. Really good beers. Like, I <laughs> like that stuff. But this is for someone that we're trying to... Uh, Get, bring them into our world a little bit, right? Correct. Yes. You're you don't want to drag them in. You want to just kind of yeah, absolutely nicely. Little steps and little back. steps. You know, we we'll start with some basic beers that are going to give you some nice maltiness, as opposed to the hoppiest end of things. I like to drink. A lot of people tell me that beer really isn't that healthy for you. Now, I beg to differ. I know beer is filled with nutrients and vitamins and all that good stuff. It's basically made with the same ingredients that bread is made out of. That is true. Much. That is true. <laughs> you have wheat. You have barley. You know. <laughs> and if an average 12 ounce bottle of beer sported a nutritional facts label, like the ones that you see on food, this is what it would tell you. That beer has no fat, beer has no cholesterol, beer is caffeine free, beer contains no nitrates, it's low in sugar, contains significant amounts of magnesium, selenium, potassium, phosphorus, <laughs> chock full of B vitamins, and beer is 92% water. A little history thing for you. You know this, back in ancient times, it was safer to drink beer, usually than at a local water supply. Absolutely. So beer is healthier than, than you think. Again, as if we need another reason to drink beer. We don't. And I actually looked into it. It was interesting because I thought if you would drink light beers being lower alcohol and the good beers at higher alcohol, that maybe you would be better off drinking the higher alcohol beers and less beer. But it seems the calorie to alcohol ratio kind of carries throughout. You'll have a light beer with 100 calories, about 4% alcohol versus a heavy stout with 12% alcohol, but that's about 300 calories. Right, just go with a stout so all the time. So it kind of, yeah. you know, goes yeah. between the Why well, waste your time with the light beer? Go for the <laughs> stout. And speaking of food, I like food, you like food, we like to cook. What's better than cooking with beer? And different styles of beer add depth to any dish you make. Yes, because the more things that go in the beer, basically when you cook it, you get all those flavors into your food then. Let's start with a porter or a stout. Porters and stouts make great marinades. You can have all the rich flavors and original nuances of the beer, and the beer is an excellent meat tenderizer. What do you suggest for a marinade for a steak? Well, a good marinade for a steak, I would probably go with something like Ballast Point's Victory at Sea. It's a coffee vanilla porter, and uh, basically, so you're going to get lots of intense flavors. You're going to get the heaviness of the beer, and a little bit of coffee flavor, a little bit of vanilla flavors, uh, but really it's that dark, rich beer that you want to get into that. A sweet bock beer could be used as a glaze during grilling, like uh, grilling some chicken. The residual sugars in the beer will add sweetness. Like, you're going know, to throw some chicken wings on a grill. What do you suggest as far as bock uh, beer? For that, one of the beers we're actually going to taste uh, a little bit later. Okay. A uh, Wein Stefan Vitus. Um, it's actually a double bock um, at 300 calories. So that just tells you how much stuff is already in the beer, you know, in the brewing process. Lagers and stouts can be substituted for wine in stews, soups, sauces. My father-in-law, Bobby, makes a great Irish stew with Guinness. Just wanted to mention that. <laughs> uh, even like Yingling Lager, you know, again, it's a dark as opposed to a, white, a light beer. So the darker beer, a little more flavors, and might as well just use a Yingling Lager. You're not going to break the bank. Uh, Yingling Lager is also really good for boiling sausages. If you get some good German Ooh, sausages, yeah. forget the water, put a whole bunch, uh, six pack of Yingling Lager in. I know it's tough to ruin all that good beer. <laughs> but well, you're not ruining it. You're, you know, just kinda... you're just eating it in a different way, yeah. I guess. <laughs> Finally, a Lambic style beer on fresh fruit. Yeah, the uh, Belgian Lambics are very low in alcohol. They're usually at around 3.2, 3.3%. So you're not getting a lot of alcohol with it. So it's a good dessert beer. So when we come back on Wine Hop Road Stops, we're going to sample some beers that are easy to drink and introduce you into the world of craft beers. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Wine Hops and Road Stops on location at the Beer Stop in West Hamilton. If you like what you see, go to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash 
Wine Hops and Road Stops, tell us where you want us to go, tell us what you want us to talk about in the world of wine, craft beer, and good food. Right now, we got some craft beers. What we got here? Let's try them out. All right, we're going to first start with the Purple Haze. It has a IBU of 13, so that's very low on the bitterness scale, and alcohol of 4.2%. Now, this is a raspberry lager, basically. Okay. And as you taste it, I mean, it, it smells like a fruit juice. Mm hmm. Well, well, you can taste it. <laughs> fruit beers aren't exactly my thing either, but if you're just getting into the craft beer world, a fruit beer, you know, particularly for uh, my wife loves all the fruit beers. Mm -hmm. um, it's a wifey thing. Yeah. 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 But again, it's it's something, it's not a watery beer. At least it's still a beer. It is a beer. You know, so. <laughs> yeah, I, you don't get a lot of smell from it. It's not no, a. It's not a wine cooler. You right. don't get that wine cooler, you know, extreme fruit smell. It's kind of a beer with just a little bit of, uh, you know, fruit in it. It's pretty good though. Yeah, not too bad. All right. For next, what it is. Yeah. Next is the Devil's Backbone. Okay. Now this is a uh, lager out of Virginia. That's like a little bit newer to the area. So this is a full lager. Uh, it's coming in at uh, 15 IBUs and 5.5% alcohol. Now again, the IBU scale that we're talking about goes from zero to, to 2,500. 2, Most of your normal beers though aren't gonna go over 70, 80. That's about right. the average. And, and these fall in the, the lower- this is all the low scale. Nothing we're gonna scale. try today is gonna be above 25 IBUs. And that affects what? That basically affects not the alcohol content, but it really just affects the pure bitterness scale. How much hops you put in it will determine how much of a bite there is to it. Because okay. again, like you said last show, just because we say bitter doesn't mean it's bad. This is good. This is a very good lager. It is, it's nice, it's full, it's rich. A lot of flavor. Without a lot of hops in it. There's exactly. not a lot of hop taste to it. No. So it's a little different than what I usually drink. Yeah, you drink it and you're not getting that second wave of bite or bitterness like you do in the IPAs. Anyone that likes a lager, should try this. Mm. All right, next one is the Wicked Weed and it's the Lunatic Blonde. I've actually, this just came in, so I've actually never had this. So, so this I, is a blonde ale? This is a blonde ale, yes. Now this one actually is 21 IBUs and 6.5% alcohol which so is high for a blonde right and it's not a small beer i was no. going to say it's not like no. you know four or five you know percent alcohol that's usually what the blondes are this is a little higher so yeah. yeah just because you're getting into the realm of things doesn't mean you're limited to one style or two styles pretty much in almost any style except for ipas there are things that you'll want to try that aren't going to be overwhelming this is good i could i could drink this i could be happy with this this is good yeah, there, there's a lot in there. There's a, a little bit of clove almost or coriander. Yeah. And that. Mm. Um, but it's nice. It's light. It's refreshing. There's just enough hops in it to, to make a hop head like me like mm -hmm. smile. Like, yeah. I could taste the hops, you, which is good. You know there's a hop there, but again, you're not getting that second flavor at the back end. Right. On that. All right. Next, this is from New Belgium. This is their Honey Triple. Uh, this is a uh, triple ale. So it's coming in at 10% alcohol and 25 on the IBU scale. So a little bit more hoppiness in it than the last one. Correct. And a lot more alcohol. A lot more alcohol. 10% <laughs> out of only 25 IBUs. It's good and it's dangerous. Mm -hmm. It's dangerous, I say, because you cannot smell. No. the alcohol really in this you don't really taste the alcohol there's no second alcohol burn bite or anything or bite that you usually get when you get to like nine ten percent you mm -hmm. start tasting that that alcohol burn yeah. and this uh this kind of covers it uh yeah you could be drinking well. this on the beach and polish three or four off and next thing you know they're <laughs> he's thinking about the you beach out. already <laughs> it's the middle of winter he's thinking about the beach well i'm headed to the beach tomorrow so <laughs> all right we gotta get you out of here fast then okay What's up? What's next? All right. Next uh, from Wine Stefan, it's the only German one we're doing today and the first one we've ever done. This is the oldest brewery in the world. Ooh. Continuous operation from 1040 AD. Wow. Uh, so Genghis Khan drank this beer. Uh, Charlemagne. Charlemagne. You know, yeah. So, cool. um, and this is a double Genghis block. Genghis Khan. <laughs> um, and uh, box style was a difficult one to kind of fit into our mix of things, but I wanted to. Uh, this is the one that, even though it's a clear beer, it's only coming in at 17 IBUs, 7.5% alcohol, but 300 calories for a beer. So, I mean, this is almost like a meal in itself. So, what we were talking about before, <clears throat> about healthier beers, this one has a lot of stuff in it. 
this has a lot of stuff in it. But you know what? If, uh, if it's good for the Mongol king, <laughs> it's good for me. It's a historic beer. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. It's very good. Very good. And Germans, German beers always have that same finish to them, that same aftertaste. They, they, they're all drinkable. And because the Germans like to sit down at lunch, have a couple of beers, dinner, a couple of beers. Who could blame them? After though, a couple right? of beers. Yeah. So. I'm going to Germany. <laughs> mm. All right. Now, next is from Philadelphia, the Yards Brawler. Oh, okay. <clears throat> now, even though it's getting, we're getting darker in tones, this only has 12 IBUs. So very, very low on the bitterness scale, but you're going to get a lot of malt in this one. So what type of beer is this? This is a brown ale. Okay. And thus, brown. Mm, brown. Yards always makes a good beer. A absolutely. And again, you're drinking this, you might be looking at a darker color and be like, oh boy, that's going to be real heavy. It it's drinks not. very light. Yeah, yeah it's very light. Um, a brown is a great style to step into for something a little bit different, a little bit out of your comfort zone. Looks completely different. It feels different in your mouth. It's a heavier beer, but you know, the good flavors and very little bitterness. So it's not real thick. You know, a lot of people, when they see like darker beers, they're like, oh, I don't like thick beers. I Correct. don't like yep. stuff like that. This isn't yep. really thick, but has a lot of flavor to it. Mm -hmm. Again, when you go through a lot of these, the IBU, if you learn what they are, that's something really good to go by because no matter what the beer looks like, it could be black, it could be clear, it, you know, you don't really know what it's going to taste like until you kind of get down that IBU scale. Right, as long as you know that IBU number, you can kind of judge, you okay, kind of judge if where it's you, where 60, you... 70 IBUs, it's going to be very hoppy. If it's right. like, you know, 10, 15, it's going to be nice and smooth. Exactly, yeah. Now this last one is the, I got to even read this, Midnight Flickle uh, from Nimble Hill. Uh, it's coming in at 20 IBUs and 5.5% alcohol. But I, mean, there I, hate is be, I hate to be that guy, but I don't think you pronounced that right. Probably not. Let's check that bottle out. I think we reviewed this on the show before. Oh, God. <laughs> <coughs> Midnight fl 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 Flinky? 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 F-L-I-N-K-E? Flickle? Flinky? I don't Nimble know. Hill, come on with these names. I know. <laughs> so it's Nimble Hill's Midnight. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but again, it's as, as black as a beer pours. You're only having uh, 20 IBUs. So this is a black and tan. It says Correct, it's 70% yes. lager, 30% porter. Correct. Now here you're starting to get into the coffee tones of things. You get a little Ooh, bit of coffee yeah. hinting. Yeah, yeah. Um, but again, it's not a really heavy, deep, deep beer. No, you could, you could smell the coffee. You could taste mm. the coffee. It is a good beer. Yep. And it's not real thick. It's not overpowering. No. This would be another good one to cook with. Yeah. Because there's Absolutely. a lot of stuff in it. So here we have the beers for this episode. You start off with a fruit beer, you end with a pretty much a black and tan, which is still kind of light compared to, you know, some of the beers that we do go go through yes. here. This is a great intro to the craft beer world, these beers right here. Yeah, absolutely, because you have to also consider that there's so many different varieties out there. I hear people say all the time, oh, they don't like craft beers. There's so many different styles. There's 33,000 different beers yeah. out there. You're gonna find something that is gonna be within your flavor palette. So you got to get out there, experiment, have some friends over, get 10, 12 different beers. Everybody try a little sip or two, and it's a lot of fun. Yeah, so if you, if you like beer, you're going to like a craft beer. Correct. It's yeah. almost impossible not to find one that you like. Yes. So there you go. <laughs> when we come back, it's road stop time. We're going to go have pizza with our beer. Don't go away. We'll be right back on wine, hops, and road stops. Welcome back to Wine, Hops, and Road Stops right here on WYLN TV 35. If you like what we do here, Facebook.com slash Wine, Hops, and Road Stops is our Facebook page. Communicate with us. Let us know what do you want us to talk about as far as great wine, craft beer, and good food. And speaking of good food, we just started the Lenten season. And me as a good Catholic boy, I'm not going to eat meat today. So we're going to go down to the valley, the Drums Valley, that is, and go to the Vesuvio's restaurant and get ourselves a slice of pizza. And maybe some beer. If you know me, you know I like pizza and I like beer. And today's road stop has both. We're heading to 366 West Butler Drive in Drums to Vesuvio's Pizzeria and Italian Restaurant. 
For 40 years, Sophia and her family have been serving up great pizza and pasta dishes to the area, and the recipes have never changed. Everything is the same as my dad taught us how to do it. My dad was a cook on the cruise ships when we were in Italy, when we lived there. So all his recipe came from the cruise ships for, for working. It's exactly Papa's recipe. My son Donald, he makes the pizza very close to my dad. Like, he's almost there. To the point that my dad made pizza left-handed, my son is right-handed, but he makes the pizza left-handed. The sauce is made fresh every single day. For going from pizza sauce to spaghetti sauce, the dough is also made fresh daily. But you could tell the difference when it's done fresh and when it's not. For most people in the region, the name Vesuvio's is synonymous with pizza. All kinds of pizza, like this one. This is called the Jenna. It's a thin crust pizza with sauce, basil, and fresh mozzarella. But Vesuvio's is so much more, like Sophia's son Jimmy explains. We have a great selection of dinners, and they range from the caprese salad all the way through to beautiful calamari in a spicy Thai chili sauce, which is a different take on traditional Italian with the marinara. We're putting a, a fresh spin on traditional Italian. Now, a lot of people know Vesuvio's for their great pizza. They may not know is Jimmy's a big uh, craft beer enthusiast. Well, we try to have a, a wide variety of craft beers on draft all the time, as well as six packs to go. Some of the examples are the Ballast Point. We'd like to get their, their more rare stuff in. Ballast Point is out of San Diego. Like this red velvet right here. The red velvet nitro was a good pick for Valentine's Day. I like love red velvet, so when I heard about that, I needed to try it. And since it's a nitro beer, you have to like put it in a glass and turn it upside down, but you have to let it sit for a little bit to like air it out, so. But it's really good. It's a very pretty color, too. It's like a nice like red, almost like my hair. Now tell me a little bit about the Bourbon County for people who may not know. Well, Bourbon County is Goose Island's once a year offering. They, they release it only on Black Friday. Um, it's a, a stout aged in bourbon barrels, um, and then they put different flavors in it. This year was the first year that we got the coffee stout, which is a big deal for us because it's never actually left the Philadelphia area. Um, and then they had a new release for this year, which was the Northwoods. Um, it was a blueberry stout. So we, we do sell her a lot of things here. Now let's talk about that. Right. You age your Sixtals, your barrels of beer when they come in. Certain beers, yes. But like anything that is a high alcohol content, we could keep for up to five years. Um, I actually have a, a Sixtal of uh, Hardy Woods Gingerbread Stout just waiting for you know a good Christmas uh, to, to crack into it and share it with everybody. So you may come here. Mm -hmm for dinner and look at the beer menu. And on that beer menu may be something for 2013 that you've been aging for a couple years. Absolutely. You won't be able to find anywhere else. Nope, well, it, and it, it's a very intricate process. You have to make sure it's climate controlled. You have to make sure that it's untapped. You have to treat it very, very gently or else you'll ruin it for everybody down the road. Now let's talk a little bit about Pizza Boy. Pizza Boy Brewing, you have a connection with the, with the owner of Pizza Boy? Uh, Al Kaminsky, who we lovingly call Sean, uh, used to make pizzas for us for many, many, many years. I mean, in fact, we are still in great contact with him. And since he's been brewing, he's been very helpful to us, making sure that we get dibs on certain things that other people don't. Now, he named a brewing company because he used to work for you? Uh, yeah, Maybe? I think, well, he's, you know, a pizza boy. Well, once a pizza boy, always a pizza boy. Oh, I totally so, understand you know. that. <laughs> <laughs> really phenomenal beer. He's doing a whole legendary line and that's dairy like a dairy farm because he uses a milk weed IPA and pairs them with fruits, which is one of the ones that we have in the glass here, uh, Legendary Plum. That one's a little uh, tart because it's an IPA, but it has the plum finish, which kind of sweetens it and mellows it out a little bit. Um, we, the newest one that I have tapped now from Pizza Boy is the Archangel, which is a double IPA, and then he like ferments it with passion fruit to give it a sweeter finish, you know? And then uh, one of my favorites is the Avery Porter. Uh, it's a coconut porter, um, and they've aged it in bourbon barrels, which is the new trend coming up. Um, right now we have a pretty wide range of IPAs and stouts because it's winter, so stouts are big in the winter. Uh, I'm slowly starting the transition to clear out some room on the stouts to get ready for summer. Summer ale, summer shandy, all of the stuff that you guys like to drink. 
We're also doing beer flights right now, which are six uh, four ounce glasses of beer for $13. And that includes all the pizza boys. You can come down, have a great slice of pizza and drink a really good beer for a couple bucks. A couple bucks, yeah. yeah. Okay, right now we are in the middle of the Lenten season. If you're a good Catholic boy like me, you don't eat meat on Friday. Well, let's talk about pizza, because this is exactly where we're at, and it's the right, perfect right. place to be at. Well, right now we're doing pierogi pizza, which is always a fan favorite every Friday in Lent. Uh, I gruelingly mash the potatoes to go on, on that pizza. And it's good, and it's so good. Some of the other things we're doing for Lent, though, are uh, arancini, which are the rice balls with spinach and feta in it. Well, we're doing that with Alfredo sauce. I've been here three days, and I've eaten here three days in a row. I used to come here constantly. I moved to Florida three years ago. It's hard to get Vesuvios in Florida unless you FedEx it. And it doesn't taste as good. There's no good pizza in Florida. I lived in Chicago. We moved from here to Chicago. There's people who say Chicago pizza is the best. And those people are the ones that have not had Vesuvios pizza. So if you want a good beer and a great slice of pizza, you come down to the Vesuvios in the Drums Valley. This is the perfect example from Northeastern Pennsylvania pizza. And you don't eat this with a fork, you fold it and you butt into it like this, right? Ready? Mm. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Vesuvio's Pizzeria and Italian Restaurant, 366 West Butler Drive in Drums. And that's this episode's Road Stop. That's all the time we have on Wine, Hops, and Road Stops this time. Thank you, Alan, for hanging out with us and yep. sampling beer with me. If you like what you see here, stop at the Beer Stop. Tell them about the Beer Stop, Alan. Yeah, we have new beers arriving every day. We just had over 50 new beers last week. Um, so come out and try a new beer today. Or every day, right? Yep. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. I'll see you next time on Wine, Hops, and Road Stops. Here comes Johnny with the pizza. Come hey. on in, Johnny. Hey. Thanks, Johnny. Look at that. Look at that. Delivery pizza. Johnny delivers the pizza. Yep. <laughs>